Who is it? Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new here, we do videos on creepy and disturbing things here. And sometimes, but not always, that involves talking about the paranormal. And I've been working on this iceberg on my channel for a while now. It's a very long iceberg and we are finally finishing it today. We are finally doing tiers nine and 10, which are the deepest, most obscure, but also in a lot of ways, the most creepy parts of this iceberg and we're gonna finish it today. So excited to go on this journey with you guys. As a lot of you guys know, this is the paranormal CCTV iceberg. So this is alleged ghosts or paranormal activity caught on real camera, like actual footage of it. And it was put into this iceberg by this Reddit user. I will credit them again here. So we're gonna get right into it. We have tiers nine and 10 to do today. I have no other intros. I do have a sponsorship for this video though. So we're gonna roll that and I'll be right back with you. This video is sponsored by Love and Pies. Love and Pies has been my mobile game obsession since last September, as a lot of you know. I just love the beautiful graphics, the immersive story, the very engaging gameplay. This whole game is just so well made. Love and Pies is a free to download merge to game where you create items by merging them together to make fancier items and then serve customers in order to build your own thriving cafe. This game is so easy to pick up and play a quick round when you have a short break in your day. And then at the end of the day, my favorite thing to do is sit on my couch with a Netflix show and cuddle up with love and pies. There's also a ton of in-game events that you can play that are challenging and they make the game more interesting. All players right now have been working on this crazy fun challenge called Eve's Arcade. The colors and graphics of this merge board are just such a vibe but this event has been so challenging I honestly don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it this round I'm trying really hard though I'm actually pretty close so we'll see I'm also super excited to announce today that love and pies and I are actually doing something special this time this go around for just my subscribers everyone that downloads love and pies within one week of this video going up and if you use my unique link below or my QR code, play the game till day three and you will receive an absolutely amazing free gift via the in-game inbox message in seven days. So don't worry, I'll put the specific due date in the description so you know how long you have, but do that and Love and Pies will give you 200 free energy and 50 free gems. Honestly, I was tempted to ask them if I could get this deal. I know I can't because it's just for new players and it's just for my my subscribers but honestly like I'm kind of jealous of y'all because I would love 200 extra energy and gems those are like the prime the gold in the game the the what makes the game the most fun is your energy and your gems use my QR code or use my unique link which will always be right below this video in the description to get your super sweet gift all right back to the video Okay, the first one on tier nine is called Abandoned Church Chase. This one is very interesting. This is a guy that is taking video of him going into this abandoned church. And suddenly in the video, he shines a light on something and it looks like a figure in the middle of the room. He briefly turns the light off. And then when he turns the light back on, the figure seems to be standing up from a chair or from something. The description claims that then this thing thing chased Martin, who is taking this video, through the church. So the clip is about three minutes. I'm probably going to cut some of it out because a lot of it is just him running and you can't see anything anyway because it's dark. So I'm probably going to cut it for brevity, but I'm giving you context beforehand because you'll probably miss it if you don't have the context before we watch the video. And also I want to let you know that if you do miss it, when I show you this video, you don't need to go back and watch it five times. I mean, unless you want to, but I'm going to show it in slow-mo. I'll show you still images of it afterwards. So I just want to let you know, you don't have to watch it several times because we're going to watch it several times again together afterwards. So, okay, here's that clip. 
It's a little dark outside. It's, it's pretty cloudy. It's rained all day today. I'm gonna show you guys my favorite place to go. Downstairs in what I call the red room. The red room is a place I go once I'm done shooting for the day. Just to kind of look at pictures, see if I need to retake anything, re-edit anything. I'll show you why it's called the red room. It's pretty cool. Because usually, going to the basement. When you turn the light off during the day, it's got a nice tint of a uh, nice tint of red. I'll show you. It's a little dark now, but can't see. Come down here; it's peaceful. It's quiet. So this one, I don't know either way. Like, honestly, I'm not really sure. There's no proof that it's fake, to be fair. Martin only has five videos on his channel and all the others are devoted to his photography. So, I mean, I will admit that is like a green flag, if you will, because it's not like he has a bunch of other clearly set up paranormal videos on his channel and it's not just him trying to convince us. It doesn't seem like he was trying to go viral or anything like that. But on the other hand, I do have to say this would be pretty easy to set up if you wanted to. You could easily just have one of your friends dress in all black. You wouldn't really need to do much because it's so dark you can't see anything anyway. So they could just sit in a chair and then when you shine a flashlight on you on them, they like know to move in a second when you turn the flashlight back on them. It's really hard to tell anything because the video is so dark. I will give them points for creepy factor. This is a creepy video and it is not obviously fake. So I will give them that. However, I just have a feeling that because this would be easy to set up, it would make more sense that it's set up. Aguadilla UFO is next. So in April of 2013 in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, hence Aguadilla UFO, this footage was taken from a U.S. Customs Border Patrol small plane when the pilots of that plane noticed something strange in the sky. And so they used their thermal imaging camera to track whatever this was. So what's no most notable about this video is that the UFO, the unidentified flying objects, remember that does not equal alien. It just means it's an unidentified flying object, literally, but it goes into the water. It like dives into the water at one point and then comes back out. And then it seems to split into two, like two different aircrafts. So this means that it is most likely not the theories that a lot of people have thrown out. It's probably not a weather balloon. A weather balloon wouldn't go underwater or split in two. It's probably not a Chinese lantern, which is a, what a lot of people are claiming this video is, is a Chinese lantern. 
moving that fast somehow. Also, according to the experts, it's very unlikely that this is a drone or a bird. This particular footage was actually studied. So the Scientific Coalition for UAP did a study and did a, quote, detailed analysis of the 2013 Aguadilla, Puerto Rico UAP captured by the Department of Homeland Security. And their conclusion was as follows. The object witnessed by CBP and tower personnel and recorded on the CBP DHC-8 aircraft's thermal imaging system is of unknown origin. There is no explanation for an object capable of traveling underwater at over 90 miles per hour with minimal impact as it enters the water. Through the air at 120 miles per hour at low altitude through a residential area without navigational lights and finally to be capable of splitting into two separate objects. No bird, balloon, no aircraft, or known drones have that capability. So there's that. So that leaves us with a lot more questions than answers. Um, according to them, this isn't a bird. And I would have guessed a bird at first. I would have guessed that because of the way the video was taken, you can't tell how fast it's really going and that this bird dives. It's actually two birds and they're just flying next to each other on film. They both dive into the water to get something. And when they come back up, they're no longer flying right next to each other. So it looks like the aircraft split into two, but I'm not an expert. And that sounds a lot more expert and way more official to me. It seems like an actual government agency that is assigned to um, exploring and investigating UFOs. So, I mean, who am I to say that this is fake or that there's a reasonable explanation? They claim that according to their analysis, this object is going 90 miles an hour and then 120 miles an hour. So yeah, that would not be a bird or a drone or a lantern. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know what you think of this one because I did try to do a little bit of cursory research on this particular group, this coalition, the SCUAP group. It's impossible to say without reading it from a paper or a script, but I tried to see if there was like any known bias or any like known like quackery going on that this group is known to be like uh, they really want to believe and aliens. And so they kind of use confirmation bias in their analyses. And I couldn't find anything to lead me to that conclusion. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not saying that is 100% fact. I would be interested to know if anybody knows more about these. It seems like a legit government agencies. And I I mean, supposedly government agencies are supposed to be, you know, non-biased and have like real experts looking at this with a skeptical eye. So I don't know. But yeah, so that leaves us with, again, we don't know. This video could be real or there's a reasonable explanation that they could not figure out either. Okay, Bloody Mary is 100% real is next. This one's hilarious. This one's from September, 2013. So it was from over 10 years ago. It's a young guy. It looks like maybe he's even still a teenager. And as the title implies, he's playing Bloody Mary by him by himself in a bathroom and seeing to try to prove if it's actually real. So like I said, this one made me actually LOL. You probably already know my thoughts on it before we even watch it, but here's the clip. I'll show you anyway. I'm going to do Bloody Mary 12 times. See if she's real. All right. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Are you real, Bloody Mary? Or are you just a fucking joke? Fuck. Did y'all just hear that? Dude. Bloody Mary. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Bloody Mary, 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 Bloody Mary.
do that. What the fuck's going on here? Shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh crap. Please close it. I don't know if this is real. Please. How do I quit this shit? What's going on here? She's not letting me out. She's not letting me out. Fuck. I told you. Oh shit. Oh shit. What's going on? What is fucking going on? Nothing's turning off. Nothing's fucking turning off. What's going on? Tell me what's going on. Please, anyone out there. Days are over. Hey guys. Okay, this one is very obviously fake, at least to me. Notice that he never pans down to the floor or anywhere lower than like the top of the cupboards. It's almost like there's a person crawling or slithering around on their stomach on the floor, moving stuff out of the frame. The other thing that seems so very obviously fake to me about this video is the way that he's like trying to act like the door is locked and that the faucet on his sink doesn't work, but it's very clear that he's just like rattling it around both handles around with his hand and he's not actually trying to open them or turn it on and it's just like I don't know this one's really funny to me I'm not even sure why this one isn't red to indicate that it's debunked because this one so obviously fake. Very cute though. It it really didn't go viral. It only had a few thousand views. The comments are turned off, so I couldn't tell if anybody actually believed it or not. Okay, dog man or werewolf is next. This is only a 12 second clip. I'm gonna play this clip for you three times. I'm gonna play it for you twice at normal speed. And then for the third time, we're gonna slow it down a little bit. Oh, hi. Did you wanna say something to the microphone? Do you wanna say hi? Oh, your breast stinks. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi to the video. This is apparently a clip that somebody claims to have gotten in the Wichita mountains. It was taken in 2015 and the Wichita mountains are in Oklahoma. All right, so some skeptics are saying that this looks like a lynx or a bobcat to them and that that's all this footage is of and that's it. I don't know, again, in my very personal unexpert opinion, it really does not look like an animal to me, at least not like a small cat animal like that. This one is hard. It could be somebody in a costume, of course. It could be somebody who 
had this costume, bought this costume, made this costume, and then they posted this video looking like somebody filming them through the trees. It's hard though, because if this is indeed a costume, the ears move. If you notice in the video, the ears slightly move just slightly. It's hard to catch if you don't have it pointed out to you. So if that's the case, there's got to be some CGI going on then in post edits. My first thought was that this was a puppet, that this was a very elaborate puppet because then they would be able to do it without using CGI and then they would be able to manipulate the ears and the mouth and stuff like that if you had a puppet. And then the uploader claims that they didn't take the video themselves, but that they know the person who did. And the person that took the footage conveniently wants to remain anonymous. That's a little strange to me. I don't really feel like you're unlocking some government secret here or anything classified or anything like that. I guess some people are afraid of like the men in black coming to erase your memory if you discover something, but I don't know. That just seems really strange to just like if you just found a weird real creature in the woods that you would want to remain anonymous, but okay. The reason that we only have a 12 second clip is because the uploader again claims that the battery died in the camera and that it's a camera known that for its battery dying pretty quickly, which again, I just like to say convenient. The shorter the footage, the harder it's going to be to debunk. You know what I mean? Like the shorter the footage, like, of course it's going to be there's going to be less opportunity for a slip up or a mess up. And I, you know, I just, I, I don't know. It just seems suspicious to me. The uploader also claims that the person who took this footage would be willing to be interviewed if they had their face blurred and if they were kept anonymous. He even followed up with people in the comments and said that this person was still willing to be interviewed because several people were interested, of course, in interviewing him. But then again, conveniently after that, he like ghosts them all. And as far as I can tell, no one has ever been interviewed about being this alleged uploader of this video. You think he would have linked that interview? I did, again, search the net and couldn't find it. It's a possibility yet again that through my human error, I didn't find the right keywords or I didn't look up the right thing and maybe it exists somewhere. I would love it if somebody actually provided this uh, interview with this uploader. But as far as I know, he was like, oh yeah, he'll be interviewed. He's, this is real. And this guy is defending that this footage is real and all that. But like then unwilling to show any proof and the burden of proof is on you. You can't be mad at us for not believing it if you don't prove it to us convincingly. Next is Ghost Rides Its Old Wheelchair in Hospital. This one is also very interesting because it's not just the footage itself, but it is CCTV footage. The staff sees the CT CTV footage and they want to try to figure out what happened. They're confused. And so the next day you can see them like trying to recreate the scene and trying to figure out how this video was caught. This for context was taken at a hospital in Thailand in 2020. ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่
Đó mê nắn This one is pretty hotly debated in the comments. Um, the most obvious question that skeptics ask is why would a ghost need a wheelchair? Others are saying that it's a remote control wheelchair or that it's just a very, very strong wind coming from different directions and the wheelchair must not have been locked. Some people point out that the timestamp in the video suspiciously goes from four minutes to four minutes and 30 seconds without showing us that 30 seconds. But others counter this by saying, well, it's a motion censored CCTV. It only turns on when something moves. And so the chair probably stopped moving in that 30 seconds. Now, I definitely don't think this is the wind because if this was the wind, then that little red plastic chair shown in the video would be flying around as well. If the wind could move a heavy wheelchair, the wind would have no problem picking up that little plastic chair and letting it fly off. It could be fishing line, I guess. Again, it'd be kind of hard. It's weird that the wheelchair was conveniently unlocked. I will say like most of the time, especially at a hospital, it's going to be habit to lock the wheelchair wherever you left it. And it does seem kind of convenient that somebody forgot to lock the wheelchair. And then that night this footage was taken like if they would have to unlock it to use fishing line, right? Or to use some trickery to pull the wheelchair to and fro. I just don't think this one is real because I don't understand why a ghost would like roll around in his wheelchair for 30 seconds and then move and then move on and walk away. Like that just seems really weird to me. I guess if they were just wheeling it around for fun for a second, I don't know. It just seems way too cartoonish. I just don't think if ghosts are real, I just don't personally think that they work that way. It is interesting that the staff is so confused by what they see on camera, but maybe it's somebody pulling a prank or maybe a few staff members are just working together to go viral. Crazier things have happened. But I will humbly admit that I don't know exactly how they did this one. Ghost walking through the snow. This is another very, very short clip taken from somebody's security camera in their front yard. I'm also going to show this one to you a couple times and try to add an arrow in there for you. So here it is. So the person that posted this video, who is allegedly the security camera's owner, is very adamant in the comments that this is not set up. He didn't doctor this footage. He didn't set this up. He didn't do anything like have something move through the snow or anything like that. He claims that this is just what he found on his security camera. Okay, so if you were to set this up, if you were to doctor this, you could theoretically make sure you were out of frame of the security camera have some object on a string on one part of the yard and then on the security camera you drag that thing through the yard <laughs> and it's under the snow so you can't really see it in the camera you can't really see the object and then you just cut the part out of the video like you cut yourself setting the whole thing up out of the video 
However, let's take this owner's word for it. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say that this was not doctored or set up whatsoever. And honestly, I could see it not being set up. It does seem like it is possibly legit. However, again, I don't think it's a ghost. I don't think that a ghost is floating around and then randomly in the middle of the yard starts running through the yard or showing their footprints, physical footprints through the yard. That doesn't make any sense. It's in the middle of the yard. It's in the middle of the snow. Are ghosts physical? Can they interact with the physical world or can't they? If they're real, it's one or the other. So my best guess is that this was footage of an animal running through the snow and you can't see the animal because it's under the snow. My best guess would be a mole. Those are very common. They're nuisances in people's yards in the US because they go under the ground in your yards and they dig up all these ugly mole hills everywhere and mess up your grass and your terrain and everything like that. So I'm wondering if this is a mole that was actually just below the surface or it was just under the snow, but it was over the land and it had then come up in the middle of the yard from its hole, which would make sense, ran through the yard and was like, oh shit, I'm not underground and then went back underground afterwards. So that's my best guess of what this is if this is indeed not set up at all. Katie's ghost is next. This is more security footage from behind a bar and there's no sound in this one, FYI. Okay, so the description of this video says that there's a wolf looking face thing on the wooden wall part under the glasses on the right. I think they're talking about this area, I think. If they're not, they're talking about this area and they described it wrong. I don't personally think that's anything. I just think the footage is black and white and not super clear and could easily be reflections or just a trick of the camera due to the low quality. So I'm gonna just brush that off as um, people looking for patterns where there aren't any. As for the glass just jumping off the bar, yeah, that is creepy. And I am a little bit more inclined to believe that because... I have talked, when I've gone on ghost tours and stuff, I've gone on um, haunted ghost tours in Seattle and stuff. And sometimes you get to talk to the bartenders at the place, uh, the haunted bar that you're at, and you get to talk to the people that work there. And they're, they are not inclined. They're not paid to say this or anything. As far as I know, they're not like actually directly involved with the tour. And they swear that this stuff happens in their haunted bars, that often a bottle will break or a glass will just be tipped off and broken onto the floor for no, for seemingly no reason. Now, could those people enjoy messing with the people that come through on the tours? Of course. Or they just know that it makes the bar more enticing. Maybe it increases their tips a little bit if they like play up the lore. So maybe I'm a sucker, but I do, I am inclined to believe that slightly more. What's also really interesting about this video is that everybody in the video does seem genuinely surprised that they just witnessed this and are kind of like looking over the bar and like asking her what happened. They could all be in on it or the staff could have set this up to get a genuine reaction out of the patrons. 
who really knows? So I'm just a little suspicious, but I guess I can't debunk it. And I guess I'd be more inclined to believe this over many other videos. Moving keys is next. This is a clip from a subreddit, the subreddit r slash ghosts by user Brucey B. Let's just watch the clip first and then I will give you more context. So I read through a lot of the comments on this post, and I think we need to explain a few things about this video for it to make sense. So according to OP, he has a regular solid outside door on the outside of this gated door. So this gated door is an indoor door. So there's like two layers to his entrance. According to OP, these two doors do not touch. You could kick the outside solid door from the outside and the indoor door door would not be moved or rattled at all. A lot of people in the comments were like, dude, that's not a ghost. That's somebody who's in your house. You need to be concerned. But OP claims that that is not possible because first of all, you couldn't shake the keys from that outside door. You know, we just talked about how you couldn't kick that door and it wouldn't shake the inside door. The doors are not touching. So OP is claiming that if somebody was trying to break in from the outside door, it wouldn't shake the keys like that inside. And then he explained explains the reason that his keys are in the door in the first place. A lot of people did not understand that, me included, because I don't do that. But apparently this is common for a lot of people and it depends on the lock, but he leaves the keys in that door door all the time because it prevents somebody from picking the lock. So if there's keys in the door on this side, they can't pick the lock from the outside. And then there's the additional benefit of him always knowing where his keys are. OP claims that when he took this video, he was taking a shower. While he was in the shower, he heard the inside door, that gate door slam. He got scared. He jumped out of the shower immediately and started filming only a few seconds after he heard the door slam, obviously because he was scared because it really seemed like there must be somebody inside his apartment. The inside door was slammed and he just caught the latter part of it. And that's why the keys are moving on the inside because the inside door moved, not the outside door. Does that all make sense? I hope it does. So naturally everybody in the comments is like, OP, please, are you absolutely sure there's nobody inside the house? That nobody broke in, slammed that inside door and then went off to hide. And OP swears, no. He says that he checked the entire apartment, the entire place after he saw the keys move. He said he checked closets, under beds, and there was nobody inside of his place. He claims that the outside door was still locked from the inside. So nobody broke in and then was slamming the door as they left again, because how would they have left and then locked the front door behind them from the outside? Now, to be fair, he could have set this up if he was claiming he was home alone, but he actually wasn't, which is how a lot of people set these videos up. He could have had somebody in the house and they just moved the keys and he started filming it afterwards. This is my personal favorite explanation because I actually do believe OP here. I don't think he set this up. I don't know. Again, I have no proof of that. It's just like, I just get weird hunches. It's just an intuition. So absolutely nothing to back it up. So take whatever I say with a grain of salt. But if this was not set up, I think that the best explanation and people in the comments suggested this as well, is that this was some sort of seismic activity, that this was a small earthquake that shook his apartment. But because he was in the shower and you know, you can't hear anything in the shower, you're senses are going to be off because of the water running on you. And so because of that, he didn't feel it. It was a very small earthquake, so he didn't feel it. But then maybe that caused the door to slam or rattle. And then that rattled the keys in turn. I don't know. I think that's a pretty reasonable explanation or something to that effect, like something like that. I mean, it just nobody was in his house. So he either has a ghost or it was an earthquake and earthquake just seems more logical. Okay, OLV was next, but I couldn't find this one. It was on a suspended Twitter account. I have no idea what OLV even stands for. So I would have 
no way of finding this one. So as always, if you know what this one is referring to, it seemed to be a tweet and it was titled OLV. Feel free to email it to me. Poltergeist 529-2028 is next. I got serious deja vu watching this one and I'm pretty sure it's because I have either seen this before or covered it on this channel before maybe. Maybe I did it in a TikTok debunk video, but I cannot remember. A lot of people though say that this is the best proof that they've ever seen. So let's watch this video and then we'll come back and talk about it. Here it is. Brown. And I think there's a squatter in this house. I think it's in here. Hello? 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 Anybody here? Hello? Hello? What the heck is that? Hello? Okay, so I do call fake on this one. I personally do believe that this one is completely set up. There's no proof that this guy is in the house alone. Just because he says he's in the house alone doesn't mean he is. And it seems like he's a contractor working on the house. And most of the time, there's going to be multiple contractors working at one time. Like you'd think just for safety reasons, because if you had an accident and something happened to you while you were doing the construction work on the house, which involves nails and nail guns and all other power tools, you'd think you'd want somebody else in the house in case you got cut or had another accident and needed to scream for them to call 911. And then for me, the biggest red flag is when he goes to film that room after the door opens by itself, he starts filming the room, but never shows us behind the door. He scans the entire room, but is very careful not to show us behind that door where somebody is probably hiding after they opened it. Spinning the phone after he runs away was a very nice touch. I will admit that that was well done. That would be tricky to do if the the other person came out from behind the door to do that. The reason that would be tricky is because you would undoubtedly get a shadow if you weren't careful. There would be a shadow of you above the phone or you get a glimpse of you above the phone. I bet that they had a stick or something like that, something long that they were able to like move the phone with and uh, make it spin once or twice, like the ghost was gonna pick it up or something. But let's be honest, even if there was a shadow, even if there was a shadow of the person spinning the 
phone after it was quote unquote dropped, people would just think that's a ghost too. They would just think that's a shadow person. Okay, last on tier nine is Turkey UFO. This was featured on the Truth Is Out There show on the History Channel. I'm actually not gonna show you the direct clip of this one because the only clip available that I could find is on the History Channel clip and they are definitely going to uh, copyright claim this video even if I use two seconds of their clip, but that's okay. I don't think you really need to see the video. I'm just gonna show you screenshots of what's in the video because it's just this one thing anyway in the whole video. So the footage was taken in Istanbul, Turkey in 2009. And with this one, if you zoom in and enhance the footage, many people think it looks like there are two figures that you can see inside of the aircraft flying it. Enhanced even more, it even looks like what we stereotypically think aliens look like. Like, look at this. And as far as I know, this one also has never been like actually debunked. To be fair, it's never been proven to be real either. And again, I remind you, a UFO just means an unidentified flying object. It doesn't necessarily mean alien. And I've also said this so many times, a lot of my longtime viewers are probably sick of me saying this, but I remind you yet again that the universe is more or less infinite. Like it is so unbelievably large, our little teeny human brains can't even fathom how large it is. Do you know how many planets and how much other life is probably in the universe? We are small potatoes compared to the universe. Like, you know what I mean? And so that is a reason to believe that yes, aliens are undoubtedly real. We are aliens to other planets, but I just have a hard time believing like why there's gotta be millions and millions of planets and lots and lots of life further than we've been able to discover. Why would aliens with such high technology be interested in Earth? I did, that's what I struggle with the most is that I just like don't understand why the fuck they would care about us. That just seems, yeah, I don't know. That's what does it for me. And then I always have a hard time when the uh, quote unquote found alien looks exactly like what we see in cartoons and mythical stories. It just all seems weird to me. So I don't really believe this one, but yet again, it's one that I, it hasn't been debunked and it definitely is some sort of unidentified flying object. Hello, I am filming this video over two different days. So that's why the angles and I am wearing a different outfit and why the angles maybe looks a little bit different, but okay. So we have already finished tier nine. We are now moving on to tier 10, which is the deepest tier in this iceberg. The first one in tier 10 is the 2019 US Navy pyramid shaped UFOs. This is a pretty quick clip, so I'm just gonna show it to you first. This video was taken in July, 2019 by someone in the US Navy. So if you Google these keywords, a ton of headlines come up explaining that the Pentagon themselves have confirmed that this is genuine footage of a UFO. For those of you outside of the US, the uh, Pentagon is just our Department of Defense. Basically, it's where our Department of Defense operates out of. And interestingly enough, there is a Snopes article confirming that the Pentagon said this, that the Pentagon did confirm that this was actually a video taken by the US Navy of some sort of flying object that has yet to be identified. I personally really like Snopes. I know some people have mixed feelings on it. I personally think Snopes is a good source because I feel like they cross track for us quite a bit. But regardless, Snopes only confirmed that the US Navy took this video. They didn't confirm it to be an alien or anything like that. Then there's a New York Post article about this video where a UFO quote unquote expert, whatever that really entails, claims that he has debunked this video and says that this is simply a plane. So as most UFO videos, that seems to be the conclusion, right? Is that 
it's definitely, it's an unidentified flying object, but we don't know if it's a drone, if it's a plane, if it's a weather balloon, or if it's actually an alien spaceship. We can't tell what this one is. As always, I usually tend to not believe that it is just aliens just flying around and somebody catches a video and nobody else catches anything else and then they just fly off back to their planet. I also have said this a million times, but I just don't think aliens would be interested in humans that much. So that's my personal opinion on it. Um, just because it's unidentified doesn't mean there's not an explanation for it. It just means that the footage is not good enough for us to be able to come to a conclusion. Apollo 20 Mona Lisa is the next one. As you can see on the iceberg, this one is in red. It has been debunked. This one is actually really interesting though. So let's take a look at it. This was a viral video that claimed to depict an Apollo 20 mission that NASA carried out back in the 1970s. That NASA went to the moon and on the backside of the moon, they found the body of a woman woman who, as you'll see in the video, is fully intact with skin and everything. It's claimed that back in the 70s on this mission, NASA found the body of some sort of human being that is believed to be either millions or some people even claim up to a billion years old and has been perfectly preserved in suspended animation, basically, on the moon. This woman has been affectionately named the Mona Lisa. So here is the video. Unfortunately, it's not the original because that one, as far as I can tell, has not existed on YouTube for quite a while. Allegedly, NASA launched a secret Apollo 20 mission to the moon to investigate what seems to resemble something man-made laying in a crater on the backside of the moon. It is speculated that this is a spaceship. It looks more like it's made of stone, or rock, and hand-carved by somebody. Similar to what we see in Stargate, which represents the alien technology. Let's watch a bit of this video, and examine what we see first. We see several gauges, and several switch panels. We see a hatch, or compartment cover, with an Apollo 20 patch, and a half Russian and half American flag taped to it. The beginning of this video matches up with what we should see in a real lunar module. Supposedly, the body of a woman was retrieved, which is allegedly 1.5 million years old. It appears to have been brought on board the lunar module. At first, it appears to be frozen. After some poking and prying at it, and after some thawing the weird splints that were attached to her eyes and mouth apparently had been removed. At this point it seems her face must still be elastic because her mouth is now mostly closed. Let's watch a bit more of the video, and examine what else we see. We see orientation of the horizon gauges, and several switch panels. We see a window, and then a second astronaut. After some digital comparison to a real photo of Leonov, it seems this astronaut's facial features are correct, and seem to match up with Leonov's face. He zooms outside through the window, and we see equipment on the surface of the moon casting shadows. There are apparently landed on the moon. The movement of the camera seems like it's scripted. I say this because, here they have an alien female on board, and yet the camera person finds the control panels and moonscape just as compelling to film. As if they are trying to convince the viewer that they are in a real lunar module. So this video has been debunked and I will tell you why. That's because this video of this woman was from a science fiction book by an author named Terry Speth. I might be saying his name incorrectly, which I do apologize for. It is spelled in another 
language. But yeah, it's a novel. It's a science fiction book. You can literally buy it on Amazon. And if you go to the Amazon page, you'll see that this woman, the picture of her is on the cover of the book. So in 2007, the author did come forward and admitted that he created this video as a hoax. He created the video as something to go along with the book and he posted it on April Fool's Day in 2007, at least according to him. I couldn't find, again, the video being posted on that day in 2007, but according to him, that's what he did. And it was a joke. It was a prank and he kind of did the whole like, haha, I bet you money that a bunch of people will believe this. There's a Facebook group for this book as well. And I hope he got a lot of good marketing for it because that is pretty ingenious marketing to get a video that seems genuine to go viral. People discover that it's not and then they want to read your book. It's kind of cool. But yeah, very interesting video, very authentic looking video, but the author himself has come forward and said the whole video is edited. Next on our list is Empty Building with Opening Doors. I'm excited we have a few on this tier from r slash ghosts, the ghosts subreddit. I really love any videos and proof from r slash ghosts because it's not people just posting videos on YouTube hoping to go viral. You know, I feel like that's where a lot more people are more motivated to face things because they're going to get attention and clout for it. And I feel like the community on r slash ghosts are just people that are posting things that they found really weird in their normal lives, but then they wanted to debunk it. Like they want somebody to come up with a reasonable explanation for them to like put their minds at ease. And the group on r slash ghosts are all, they all seem to be skeptical. It's wonderful because it's not that they necessarily don't believe, but they're a lot like me where they're like, well, 99% of the time there's a logical explanation. People that post on there genuinely just want opinions and feedback and suggestions for other explanations. Anyway, here is the 40 second clip. Pay attention to the door on the bottom right side of the screen. So this was posted in 2020 on this subreddit, and I would be very curious to know what you guys think. I am just slightly more inclined to believe that something like this is not set up for all the reasons that I just listed before I showed you the video. And additionally, OP is in the comments being pretty adamant that the owner of the video, the person who took the video, is very much not making this up and did not set this up. FYI, if you're wondering why the screen was shaking so much, it's because they were taking a video of their computer screen of the video playing. Now, I could just be a sucker for people on Reddit and thinking that nobody would possibly set anything up on there. And maybe for some reason I have a bias and I just want to believe this one, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I do think that it is a pretty spooky video. However, I do think it could have been set up, even if that goes against the rules of r slash ghosts. Face in window of jail is next. Finally, one that doesn't need context before I show you. So I'm just gonna play the clip for you now. We're in the phase of the investigation now where everybody breaks off in their own little areas with, you know, a handy cam. And we're just sort of checking around to see if we can find anything on our own. And uh, hopefully, you know, each one of us finds our own evidence, our own personal stories. Just sort of checking around. Just sort of checking around. Just sort of checking around.
So the description of this video does provide further context. The person who posted this video claims that his dad is friends with the building manager of this abandoned jail. Yes, they're in an abandoned county jail and they are family friends with the building manager and the building manager agreed to let them in so they could film. He also says that they weren't actually ghost hunting. They were literally goofing around and taking a video of a ghost hunter's parody. He also says that all the cells were closed and locked and they were all locked up because they were being used for storage. So behind the doors in these cells was a bunch of boxes. So assuming that he is telling the truth, that's not one of his friends playing a prank on him or doing a setup for a video. However, to be fair, there is no way to confirm that these cells were in fact locked. Now, I don't personally think this one is fake or set up in the sense that I don't think that they purposely, again, put somebody in the window just to take this video and then just happen to discover it when they're looking at the footage later. However, I am skeptical about this actually being a ghost. I very much think that this could be the pareidolia effect that maybe there's smudges on that window combined with the lighting and the reflections when filming by it and walking and filming at the same time. That could make it look perhaps like there is a face in the window, especially because the face is like, looks like it's frozen in a scream. The face does look very distressed. And I just have a hard time believing that, again, assuming ghosts were real, that a ghost would be just standing there screaming like that. I don't know, that just seems really weird. Like why would a ghost just stand there with its face in the window with an expression like that? I just think there has to be a reasonable explanation for this one. The other possible explanation, this is just where my brain goes, this is speculation, I have no idea. But my other thought was like, what if somebody who was packing up the jail and putting all the boxes in the cell Else. Like, what if they printed out a face and they put it on one of the boxes <laughs> and like taped a giant face on the box? And so it's not directly on the window, so you don't see it super clearly, but it's on one of the boxes behind the window. And so you would kind of see it in the camera, but not fully. Like, <laughs> that's just where my brain goes. I don't know if that's it either, but I personally think there's probably a more reasonable explanation than a ghost or a demon. All right, ghost in the attic of an old abandoned house. This is from a YouTuber who's still posting to this day. The YouTuber is called Nugget Noggin. This video is over five minutes and it's just him and one other person exploring this abandoned house. Not much happens in the video, honestly. I'll overlay some of it here, but I'm not gonna show you the whole five minute video because there's just not that much that happens in the video. But at the end, Nugget Noggin shares a photo that he took with us. So he explains that in the while he was taking the video, when he went upstairs, he felt really, really weird. He felt like somebody was watching him. So like just off of instinct, he just started taking pictures of the house around him without really any direction and that he found this photo. So as you look at this pic, just FYI, I thought this was a fireplace. I thought he was like taking a picture of something on the ground, but for context, this is the opening to the attic in the ceiling. So he's taking the photo from down below. He's, you know, standing on the regular floor and taking this photo of the attic opening. I don't know, it doesn't look like a little girl to me like he suggests. It looks like a clown face peeking around the corner, which is admittedly terrifying. But I also think that, is it possible that since the attic was open, there there was an object up in the attic and it was like at the edge of the attic opening. And so you could like see a piece of an object, but it's dark in there. So you couldn't see it very clearly. Like that's kind of what I'm wondering is that if there was a light shown on that object, which he didn't do while he was there, obviously, which makes sense because he wasn't looking for anything in particular. I just kind of wonder what would be there if a light was shown on it, if there would be nothing there and it was just a trick of the light if there was really a demon or if it was just an object sitting up in the attic. I also just want to uh, point out the fact 
that just because a place is creepy like this place or just because a place is abandoned does not automatically mean that it's haunted. And I feel like a lot of people think that just because a place has a creepy vibe means automatically that it's haunted or that something nefarious is going on there. And that's not always the case. Like sometimes we're just conditioned to think a place is haunted because places in ghosts, movies, and TV shows depict haunted places to look like places like that. So I just want to like remind everybody that also if you're told or if you believe a place is haunted when you go into it, you are way more likely to either see a ghost or hear something or gather evidence because you're more alert and you're maybe a little more paranoid and you're also just like, it's a natural confirmation bias. You're like, you're looking for something to confirm your suspicion, which is not your fault, obviously. It's nobody's fault. Like that's just human psychology. Okay, Mexican Cemetery Ghost Girl. Here's another really old one. This is all the way back from 2007. So it's like 15, 16 years old. Okay, so as you just saw, the quality of that video is so bad, it's almost not worth analyzing, which like, I get it. Like you're in a cemetery, it's super, super dark, you're shaking and you're nervous. And the camera phones back then were not as good as they are now. Like, I get it. It is understandable that the video quality is not good. But it also means that I'm not going to just believe you and take your word for it that it was a ghost that you saw. Like, lights can and reflections can make anybody's eyes glow like that in certain darkness and certain lighting. This could easily be a child or a petite woman in a gown that is just sitting there and he's taking this weird footage of them and you would never be able to tell because the quality is so poor that I, I'm not going to say one way or the other because uh, I don't know, but I have a feeling that this one is set up. I feel like there'd be more context if it was real. People visit abandoned hospital and witness paranormal incidents inside it. Unfortunately, I can't show you this video clip at all because it says that some media company owns it and they will no doubt claim my entire video if I show you any piece of their footage. But don't worry, it's a really boring video anyway and it's 12 minutes and this video has no business being 12 minutes, let me tell you. The most exciting thing that happens in this entire video is around the eight minute mark, one of the chairs moves. I'll show you a screenshot of it right now and one of the chairs moves and it is very obviously fishing line that someone is pulling from somewhere off camera because the chair moves in a very clunky way. Like I said, boring video. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over objects moving. Okay, and then Poltergeist at Work 2 is another one I'm actually not going to show you because I am so silly and forgot I had actually went over this when we went over Poltergeist at Work. So if you want to go watch a refresh of that, it's at around one hour, 11 minutes in the last Paranormal Iceberg video. But this is the one where the guy was working at the hotel and he had, had been having weird activity. So he decided to set up some cameras to see if he could catch anything. And this particular video, the first one was chairs. This particular video was a closet opening. And it's actually pretty interesting because I was, again, I might be just gullible, but I was actually pretty convinced on that one. If it was fake, it was pretty well done. Okay. Real Ghost is next. This one has also been debunked. This one also doesn't need context first. I'll show you the clip right here.
Great video. We know it's fake because the creator told us. Their description box is full of affiliate links to After Effects and other editing softwares. They even say in the pinned comment, I hate to spoil the fun, but my channel is a filmmaking and VFX channel. You can learn how this video was made on my channel too. So they straight up told us that this video was completely made up, but I appreciate that so much because it goes to show you how easy it is for, I mean, granted they're filmmakers. So I feel like a lot of people don't go the editing route. I feel like a lot of people go the uh, fishing line and green screen suit route. However, because they are really good editors, I think that's really important for us to see the type of ghost videos that go around that could be very convincing, even though they are straight up all made during editing. Okay, Real Ghosts Disturbing Cats is next. This was supposedly an animal camera that a couple of people left at home to watch their cats while they went away for a few days. They said they did get a cat sitter to come and check on their cats too, but they also had a video set up so that they could watch them as well. So I personally think this one is fake. I think it's easy to tell because if you go to their channel, first of all, their channel is called Happy Fox Productions. Usually productions are in the title. It means that they create little films. If you go to their channel, you'll see that they also make short films, a lot of them using VFX. This one has several million views. I'm fairly confident that they just made this short little film in order to go viral to, again, get more attention on their YouTube channel, which Again, you guys know I have no issue with that. I get it. It's good marketing. Shocking activity is next. This one is so fake. This one is so fake. This video, it has the green filter on it. The angles are suspicious AF. If you go to this person's channel, they are still posting videos of over the top paranormal activity found in their home. There's videos of him like sitting in the dark room with again, the green lighting and praying with like the rosary around his neck. And it's just very melodramatic and just very, very over the top. It's fake. I'm sorry, but there's just like, if that's your entire YouTube channel, that's what your entire YouTube channel is devoted to. You have to make up, if you're gonna make a paranormal channel, you have to set up a lot of the activity because real ghosts would not give you enough activity to actually document it on a YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Like in order to get enough stuff to put in videos in the first place, you would have to be setting 
a bunch of it up. Spirits Moving Things is next, and this is almost, this is a different creator, but it's almost exactly the same thing. I'm really sorry to brush through some of these, but they're just so boring <laughs> to me. I'm just so sick of these super generic home videos of just objects slightly moving because it just, it doesn't tell us anything. They could all be edited or fake and I'm just, I'm just so bored of them. Be more creative. I will show you this clip anyway, of course, this one, pay attention to the chair in the middle of the room because it's a swivel chair and it swivels like left and right a little bit. And surprise, if you go to this person's channel, they are also devoted to just showing paranormal videos, which as we just talked about, in order to be entertaining, you would have to make up a bunch of this stuff. The Os Laskin's Ghost. So unfortunately, I have to show you a clip from a compilation video from somebody else because the original video doesn't exist on its own anymore, at least not that I could find. Thankfully, this one is a bit more interesting. So here you go. Settling than thinking that someone is watching you. This next video is the epitome of that experience. So it's about two o'clock in the morning. Um, I've been working in the studio and the last couple of nights I've been hearing really creepy sounds. Um, I've been hearing footsteps and, and, um, and like seeing things out of the corner of my eye. Now this is a really big old building. And so that's got me a little bit freaked out, but the top of it was just a, a few minutes ago, I was going to the bathroom and I was standing in the stall and I swear someone grabbed the back of my shoulder while I was standing there and I freaked out. So if, uh, if something happens, I want to have it on video. So this is where I was. I was standing right there. Lights are in the bathrooms, of course. Hello? I think I'm done. I think I've had about enough for today. It's all fun and games until the ghost starts playing peekaboo.
Okay, so yet again, you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think about this particular one because on the one hand, yeah, it is really creepy. Again, he does seem like genuinely scared and like maybe this wasn't set up. But I again, I don't know if it's a ghost. I could see this being an object or an optical illusion or the pareidolia effect. And this person was already nervous and paranoid. And so it is a lot easier to find things and believe that they are creepier than they are. And then of course, I always struggle with ghosts peeking around corners, but you guys know that's just a pet peeve. That's just my bias. Okay, the haunting. The next three actually we're gonna talk about in pretty quick succession. But it's the haunting the original and then the haunting eight and nine so we went over a couple of the haunting videos in the last uh part of this series and my video got copyright claimed by iron street media on behalf of the creator of those videos so i am assuming mark sold the rights of those videos to a YouTube platform that goes around and just claims everybody's videos, whoever uses even a second of one of his videos. So they're getting all the ad revenue from my two hour video for my two hour video. <sighs> Am I bitter about it? Obviously, <laughs> but all that to say is I'm not gonna show you any like actual video footage from the videos for these next three. I'm just gonna show you screenshots of the interesting that things that happened in the videos. Okay, so all of these videos are the same variations of the same thing. They've all been debunked as a fictional series on this person's channel. It's more of just that little girl in the dress showing up in random spurts in his videos. They are very well done, I will admit, and they are extremely creepy so in this one the original haunting he shows a table with a remote on it and it shows it's moving on its own and then he picks it up to show us that there's nothing attached to it that there's no string or anything on it my best guess when things like this happen would be a magnet under the table that somebody's hiding off screen under the table and they attached a magnet on the inside of the remote. And then as always, he shows us glimpses at the end of the creepy ghost girls in a white gown creeping on him once when she is laying on the ground in the corner where she wasn't there before. And then he pans over and she's there again. The Haunting Eight, he writes some messages on a piece of paper and hopes that the ghost will respond. While he's waiting for a response, a cabinet in the kitchen starts opening and closing. He gets up to check it. And then as he scans the room, the girl is there again. And then yet again, she is somewhere else. The jump scare on this one actually did get me, I will admit. So you're probably happy I didn't show you this video because the jump scare on this one was pretty good. And then he goes back to the paper. There's scribbles all over it as if the ghost wrote on it. And it also says die at the bottom. So that's terrifying. And then the haunting nine, he goes down some of the stairs to the dark basement where he's hearing a bunch of noises. Part of the reason you know this, this has to be fake because nobody in their right mind would do that. He points the camera up to the top of the basement steps and the ghost girl runs across the hallway. He claims that the ghost girl ran through the door, literally through it, which must be video editing. But when I watched it, I honestly didn't even think it really looked like she ran through the door. So it was an angle trick or kind of uh, sloppy editing. But yeah, anyway, he then sees her again now like standing on something in the living room, which is terrifying because it's so quick. It almost looks like she's floating. And then she is stacking more books randomly in the middle of his living room as well. But like we said, the whole series, it's been confirmed to be a fictional series and it is well done and just, yeah, nightmare fuel. Okay, Thing Walking in the Hallway is next. This is another one from Reddit and like I said, I really enjoy these. So this is a pretty short clip and I'm gonna show it to you. Pay attention to the little slit under the door because it's a hallway light that is on and then the person taking the video is inside a bedroom taking a video. The bedroom has its lights off and they're taking a video of that little slit under the door and there's gonna be a shadow that looks like something walks across the hall. Here's that video.
So Opie explains in the comments that they were home alone. They heard noises upstairs. So they went upstairs to check their sister's room because they felt like that's where the noises were coming from, but nobody was there. So Opie goes back to their own room and closes the door to go watch some TV. And then here's the closet in their sister's room then shut. And it was unmistakable. They said that they know exactly what that sounds like. They said that they saw the shadow under the door pass by already. So that's when they took the camera out to get some video footage of it to see if they would do it again. And this is what they caught. Now, in full disclosure, OP does admit that they were watching ghost videos on YouTube shortly before all this went down, so they were probably extra paranoid. But my first thought watching this is that if this is real, if I saw that, I would think there was an intruder in my house, not a ghost. They also claim that the bed that they were laying on was shaking and that nothing else in the house was shaking with it though, but that their bed shook briefly and then stopped but they did not get this on camera, which I understand, like I'll give them a pass for that because um, they were probably freaked out and it would probably be more suspicious if they got it on camera. Like, let's be honest. But yeah, if this happened to me, I would have shit my pants. I would have freaked the hell out and they did seem pretty freaked out. They said that once that thing passed, they like ran, they called their friend and ran out of the house and like went to their friend's house until the rest of their family went home. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Some people in the comments were suggesting that maybe it was a bug that I know that sounds weird, but maybe like the bug since it was like blocking the small amount of light source that there was that maybe a bug could make a shadow that big. But I don't know. And as far as I know, there wasn't like a cat or a dog in the house. Binak Darla's ghost which I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Vinak Darla is another Reddit user. Here is the video that they posted. So this is video that they believe they caught a ghost outside on their security camera. This one is might as well be debunked. Everybody in the comments, and I agree with them, say that this was just because this is a Wi-Fi security camera. Security cameras often record at lower frame rates, and so often people and objects moving in the footage look transparent and kind of look like what some people might think a ghost looks like. This is probably not a ghost, but somebody just distorted in low quality camera. And interestingly, same for the next and the last one on this iceberg. The last one is called White Truck. This is also from Reddit. And I'm gonna add an arrow to the video so you can see what area that you're looking at. What's moving in the video is right after he plugs in his car and starts to walk away. But I'll put an arrow on the screen as well. So yet again, I don't think that there's any mystery to this. I don't think that this is a ghost of any kind. I think that this is just Wi-Fi cameras and security cameras being wonky and catching very odd things and making things look transparent and move in a weird way. Okay, friends, that is it for today. That is the end of our paranormal iceberg tears, footage, whatever you want to call it. Please like the video just to help out the channel. If you guys noticed, we did a little changey change to the Patreon shout outs. So now when you sign up for the highest tier, you get a verbal shout out at the end of the video after you sign up, but I'm no longer doing the verbal shout outs for every single one of my top tiers at the end because this is a great problem to have, but the list was getting too long and the closing of my videos were just getting out of hand. So instead we are putting, we are featuring them in a list at the beginning of the video silently. And then at the end, I will show 
everybody, everybody from Patreon at the end and give a shout out just to new top tier. So everybody at least gets one shout out. So if you want to join the Patreon, there's lots of other stuff on there. We do Netflix parties. I put out a monthly bonus video. We do early access on at least two videos a month over there, et cetera, et cetera. So all that info will be down below as well if you are interested in joining. And I will see you guys all in the next one. So speaking of patrons, shout out to our latest top tier, Gender Fluid.